Um, Shared Interest is an ethical lending organisation. Um, we're based in Newcastle upon Tyne. We were established in 1990 um, and we currently have regional offices in Costa Rica uh, and in Kenya and we're shortly due to open another one in Peru. And what we do is we have members who make investments with us uh, and we pool those resources and then loan those investments out to uh, producers in the developing world. Okay. And what, what, what makes shared interest particularly unique? Well, we are the world's only 100% fair trade lender. Okay? Um, and it, it's an incredibly exciting thing to be able to see the changes we're able to make firsthand directly into people's lives in the developing world. So, so for the people based in the UK who make an investment with us, they can be sure that, that all of that money is being used um, for 100% fair trade certified organisations, so people have uh, good working conditions, fair wages, um, and a lot of our customers benefit from the fair trade premium in addition to that. So not only the organisations that we work with, but the communities as a whole uh, are benefiting from that investment. But we're very much about trade, not aid. So these are loans that are made to them and, and we charge a competitive rate of interest so they pay that back. The beauty of that means two things. Firstly, your investment is withdrawable share capital. So you're not making a charitable donation. You're making a, a, an investment that you are able to call on uh, at a later date. And secondly, because those loans are repaid, the money is recycled. Um, so, for instance, last year when we had around about £22 million in the bank, we actually loaned out over £30 million in the year uh, because various people were borrowing at, at different times. Okay. That's interesting. So, from, from a corporate uh, point of view, I mean, mm. do you have anything... I mean, what would you say to a CSR professional at a meeting who was worried about getting his budget cut for charitable giving, what, yeah. what assurances could you give him? Well, I mean, it, officially, an investment with shared interest is at risk. Given the nature of the, the people that we're lending to and the countries that we lend into, um, you know, we make it clear in our application procedure that that is at risk. However, since we were established in 1990, we have never lost an investor's money, so it's a pretty strong uh, track record to go with. Um, and ultimately, we don't want people putting money in and taking it out very quickly, but from a, from a CSR perspective, this is an absolute no-brainer. It's fantastic. An organization can make a, a simple investment with us um, and then be able to report on the work that they are directly affecting in the developing world where whole communities are being transformed and people really need it. Um, and yet, if they decide later on, as I said, they can withdraw that share capital and go on to use it elsewhere for, for other goods. So it's spreading a CSR budget so much further than just making one charitable donation and, and crossing your fingers. Okay. And, and digging slightly deeper than, than the finance, obviously there's a huge number of benefits to be had for any corporation that would get involved in terms of staff engagement, mm -hmm. um, awareness for their brand mm -hmm. and, and brand loyalty, that sort of thing. Can you give any specific examples of companies that you've worked with that have been able to demonstrate you know, these sorts of benefits across their business? Um, at the moment, we're, we're very much in the early stages of developing our um, CSR approach. So we only have a small number of um, local organizations who have made corporate investments. Um, but one in particular who deals with... Um, uh, it is an interior design company dealing very much with recycled materials and very much focused on the green agenda. They have secured quite a bit of local PR and press coverage um, owing to the fact that they've made an investment in shared interest because they're making quite a bold statement with that investment. Okay. And, and, and you mentioned that, that organisation which... Um, I mean, I suppose <coughs> a lot of companies want to know where they're going to have the best synergy. Mm. Um, is there a particular sector or industry type that's most well suited to what you do? Well, um, we lend to a variety of customers. Um, you know, predominantly we're talking about commodity uh, farmers, so, you know, the coffee, tea, sugar, that kind of thing, and also handicraft producers. So it's not always easy to find a, a like-minded organization here in the UK who would want to do that. However, 
um, a lot of organizations want to be involved where people are being impacted in lives and, and we've won awards for our um, social accounting and for the transparency of our work um, and in fact this year we were thrilled to win a Queen's Award for um, Enterprise for Sustainable Development over a five year period. Now a lot of organizations want to be associated with that kind of longer term development um, so it's not necessarily about aligning us with people who are in the same um, field, the same region if you like, but who share our values in making a real difference um, and, and improving lives. As I mentioned, winning the Queen's Award is a pretty clear validation of the, of the quality of the work that we're doing. Um, secondly, I would say to them that um, by being part of shared interest, they're buying into something that is you know, 100% unique. We are the world's only 100% fair trade lender. And although there may be some people out there who would like to knock fair trade, that's because they have their own agenda, you cannot um, deny the real benefits. I have seen firsthand for myself um, in Costa Rica, people whose lives have been transformed. And we're talking about building long-term sustainable businesses. Now, to make a withdrawable donation that has such a huge impact has got to be a very simple thing um, and, and stretches that CSR budget further. Um, and, and again, the transparency of our work and the awards that we have had for our social accounting on the, on the real impact on people um, and improving communities has to be something that a CSR professional would consider. From their point of view, very little input. Um, However, we would love to develop the relationship further. We have a network of ambassadors uh, nationally who are our volunteers, and we would love to develop a corporate ambassador network um, where they can actually present themselves as a key, uh, a key participant um, in the fair trade agenda and in helping shared interest to, to grow from strength to strength. Okay. That's great. And just finally, if I may, um, obviously today, there's a lot of talk around, you know, corporate charity partnerships, and a uh, big question weighing on everyone's mind is sort of what does the future hold? The, the economy is fairly uncertain at the mm. moment. Mm. What do you see as the, the sort of future being for corporate charity partnerships over the next few months? Well, I think it's even more important for us uh, as an organisation to develop the right partnerships. Um, it isn't always about, um, although the easiest thing and what we're looking for is to increase our share capital, um, it isn't always about that. Aligning ourselves and, and putting their brand together with ours could produce uh, fantastic um, media coverage. The right synergy there could be very valuable in itself. Um, a lot of what we're doing on a daily basis is newsworthy stuff. So for the right corporate partner to align themselves with us um, uh, could pay dividends hugely in that sense. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the return that they would get on uh, reporting on the, on the fact that they have this relationship and they're, they're tied to such a strong independent organization um, has to be worth their while. Um, one particular example that comes to mind of a, of a customer that we've worked with, just to illustrate the benefit of, of being a part of shared interest, is a company called Sale um, Handmade Paper Products, and they're based in the Mizumi um, Oriental District of the Philippines. Now, in this area, the average um, income is around £2,500, so you can, you can kind of judge the standard of living. And a lot of people are incredibly dependent on the small number of industries that exist, because it's predominantly fishing and, and not a great deal else. This organization um, makes uh, greetings cards and paper products and they were um, continuously um, interrupted in their production um, due to power cuts. Shared interest gave them a loan to buy their own um, generator and as a result they're now able to guarantee that they will deliver the right products at the right time to their customers. Now they supply people like Marks and Spencers today and that's as a direct result of being able to guarantee you know what their business will deliver and you don't get to supply somebody like Marks and Spencers unless you know you meet the deadlines they agree. Um, and so that is a very simple example of showing how a simple investment from us allowed them to grow. They now employ over 300 people in that local area, and they've established their own community foundation, which is benefiting much wider communities um, as the whole region, just from that one simple investment that we made. But because we have regional staff, um, uh, working closely with our customers, we're able to really get to grips with what their needs are and understand what they need and make the right loan to them at the right time. Again, bearing in mind that we're about trade, not aid, and helping them to build a sustainable uh, future, rather than giving them a charitable handout and saying, great, there you go, hope it works, and not really supporting them through it. So I think that gives a, a nice example of shared.